Joining me now is Michelle Pepe, and he's the president and CFO of Syscom. And Michelle, a pleasure to meet you. Let's start off by talking about the revenue in the first quarter, which I assume compares to last year when you did have Prospect Media on board. And yet revenue was still up. How'd you do it? Thank you, Pat, for having me this morning. Well, the uh, Syscom grows a testimony to its strength and its multifaceted relationships with its clients. As we know, the economy is not the greatest for retailers, uh, as the environment has been very difficult for them. So maintaining revenue is a feat in itself. So growth for us is an outcome of our hard work, whereas our client need benefit and appreciate the deep analytics and predictive modeling that we do as we are a needed asset for them. Okay. But at the same time, gross margins improved. So I went into the press release to take a look at what you said. You said it's the retirement of low margin projects and the realization of cost synergies through efficient procurement and operational initiatives. Can you elaborate on that, Michelle? Yes, these are the two key factors that have contributed to our improved margins. Um, as you go in business, so you start being a bit more sophisticated and critical about some of the work that you do. And uh, it's, uh, are we benefiting from doing the work that sometimes you will take account uh, that are less profitable to gain the experience? Uh, we've gained all the experience. Now we're in a position of freeing staff so that they can work on our key core accounts who, who are 95, at 90% recurring revenue uh, approximately year over year. Uh, the other part is we, from the back end, we merge both operations of our two uh, acquisitions. As such, we have a larger purchasing power and we're able to focus our efforts into uh, certain medias that were a bit more diverse and not really yielding anything to our clients at the time. Okay, let's talk about that a little bit more and unpack it because Syscom invests or acquires or manages information and communication technology. And you said in the past, at least, that you might look at one or two acquisitions per year. Where are you focusing your efforts right now? We're active in the ICT sector, which is a broad area, obviously. Um, we're now focused on businesses that are complementary to the current ones that we have. And that means that we can have synergies or benef cross-selling benefits from the client basis and also cost synergies, so back-end uh, operations. What we're looking at are digital agencies, data and analytics shops, and AI and automation organizations um, that deal with big data. Okay, expand on that AI because that's a hot topic right now. And it would seem that uh, the, the entities that are in that space might become a little bit expensive. What are your thoughts there? Yes, they, 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 they are a premium. Um, this said, a number of the applications are still in their infancy uh, and not gener revenue generating per se. Um, we're looking at B2B applications, the not necessarily B2C application on the AI side, um, but obviously in reviewing acquisitions, anything that we, we do has to be a creative for our current shareholders. Okay, but when we were talking about uh, revenue uh, from the beginning, uh, we talked about Prospect Media, and that's a big acquisition, uh, and it doubled your revenue for the full year uh, last year, pretty much. Uh, does that color your acquisitions in any space? In other words, are you looking to diversify away from that or closer to that? A bit of both, as they say. So we're uh, we're not going to be buying another competitor of uh, Prospect Media. So it will be a complementary business because uh, it's nice to be able to cross-sell the client basis. This is where a fair amount of the revenue is. The uh, Prospect Media was critical for us uh, in becoming an issuer. Uh, and now if you, we have the testimonies of the two entrepreneurs that have sold their businesses uh, to us, and that is augurs very, very well with current 
entrepreneurs that we're talking to, uh, as they're contemplating their move, it gives them a sense of security. Hmm. You inter uh, interesting. You bring about um, and talk about uh, personnel changes. Your board made some changes. Can you talk about those and and how it changes the flavor of the board? Yes, uh, we've been looking for a while to uh, strengthening our board. Um, we added remarkable and high-profile individuals. Uh, this morning, we have announced that uh, Stephen Lawtons and Angel Valov uh, have joined the board, in addition to Tracy Weslowski, who was joined on March 1st. So each brings, uh, like in Tracy, Angel, and uh, Stephen, Steph <laughs> sorry, bring their own expertise and years of experience dealing with public companies and capital markets. So we had a board that was not as oriented to public companies initially. Uh, now we have a very good board uh, and, and our roster, in addition to our special advisor, is very strong and covers all key aspects of, a, of an issuer. Yeah, it covers different aspects of the ICT space. Uh, both of the board changes are media experience. Yeah, exactly. Um, the, the first quarter, obviously, in the uh, bag. Uh, what about the second quarter? What can investors look forward to? For us at Cisco, it's steady growth, uh, continued profitable operations on a cash basis. We'll focus on having the enterprise value recognized in the market cap or market capitalization. Um, that's our key focus as we're doing our acquisitions. Mm. So focus on improving operations, the same thing we talked about in the first quarter, but also expanding. Is that correct? Correct. We, our mandate is a, an m and mergers and acquisition mandate. Uh, we are focusing on this uh, as we move forward. Our yes. operations are well run. Now uh, we're really focusing on value creation. Is it easy in this um, environment to raise capital? In the last two years, uh, raising capital for uh, small cap issuers has been very difficult. Um, nobody would take calls. Um, money was funneled to larger issuers. Um, it seems that uh, in... Uh, the early part of 2024, uh, the wave has changed a little bit. Uh, we actually have discussions with investment bankers right now that uh, are opening doors. They are more receptive at, at uh, infusing cash into uh, micro cap or small cap issuers. So uh, it's turning positive. It, it's not what we knew a while back. But uh, the outlook is very positive. Yeah, it sounds like a great future, Michelle. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Michelle Pepin is the president and CFO of Syscom.